It's Umsum time! How does an electric bell work? No idea. I did not invent it. Oh, Umsum. To buy Umsum merchandise, visit Umsum.com. <laughs> an electric bell consists of a bell, an electromagnet, switch, battery, clapper, and a coil. When the switch is closed and electric current passes from the battery to the electromagnet, this leads to the creation of a magnetic field. This magnetic field attracts the iron arm of the clapper. As a result, the metal ball strikes and we hear a sound. Hmm. Now, this movement of the arm also leads to the opening of electrical contacts. This interrupts the current to the electromagnet and causes collapse of the magnetic field, causing the clapper to move away from the bell. Now, this movement of the arm leads to the closing of the electrical contacts again. Thus, the cycle starts repeating itself. As it repeats rapidly, we hear continuous <laughs> ringing. This is how an electric bell works. Hmm. Topic, earthing. Why do buildings have lightning rods? I know, they are used to dry clothes. <laughs> nah, huh? they are used for earthing. Earthing means digging the earth, right? No, earthing is the process of transferring charge from a charged object to the earth. It is done with the help of this lightning rod. Hmm. A lightning rod is a metal rod whose lower end is fixed to a copper plate buried <laughs> deep in the earth while upper end has spikes. But why is it called a lightning rod? Huh? This is because it protects us from lightning. Lightning is a flow of massive charge. <laughs> It can damage huh? an entire building and harm the people living in it. Hence, to protect them, the <laughs> lightning rod transfers the massive charge from the lightning to the earth safely. <laughs> Topic: Acid base indicators. Why does a turmeric stain turn red? Mm. Oh no, you got a stain on the shirt. Mm. Huh? <laughs> I know what you were thinking. No, nope, there is no point. None of the two bottles are of any use. Huh? Listen to me. Don't wash the stain with the soapy solution. The stain will turn red. <laughs> See, I told you. Hmm. Do you know why this happened? Hmm. This happened because the food which fell on the cloth had turmeric in it. The color of turmeric is yellow. It is a natural indicator which tells us whether a substance is an acid or a base. Now, let us get back to those two bottles. One contained a lemon juice, while one contained a soapy solution. When we pour the lemon juice on the turmeric powder, we see that the color of turmeric powder is still yellow. This is because lemon juice is an acid. Turmeric does not change its color when it comes in contact with an acid, indicating that the lemon juice is an acid. <laughs> However, when we pour the soapy solution on the turmeric powder, we see that the color of turmeric powder mm. turns red. This is because soap is a base. When turmeric comes in contact with a base, it changes its color from yellow to red, indicating that the soapy solution is a base. Huh? That is why a turmeric stain turns red when it comes in contact with any kind of base. Mm. Topic, buoyancy. <laughs> oh! Hmm? Hmm? Ah! Can you drown in the Dead Sea? Your answer must be yes, right? You must be thinking that anyone who cannot swim will obviously drown, whether it is a swimming pool or the Dead Sea. However, that is not 100% true. Hmm? Confused? Hmm. Let me explain to you. When an object is partly or wholly immersed in a fluid, an upward force is exerted by the fluid on that object. This tendency of the fluid to exert an upward force on the object is called buoyancy, or upthrust. This upward force is called buoyant force. So, do you finally get it? Hmm, let me give you one more example. Place a piece of wood in water and push it downwards. What do you observe? It seems like something is pushing the piece of wood upwards, right? Water exerts an upward force on the wood. That is why the wood is getting pushed upwards. 
This force is called buoyant force, and the tendency of water to exert that buoyant force is called buoyancy. Dead Sea has a huge amount of salt dissolved in it as compared to any other sea or ocean. The presence of this salt increases density of water present in the Dead Sea. Higher density leads to greater buoyant force. As the Dead Sea has very high density, it exerts enough amount of buoyant force to make us float on it. So, if we can float on the Dead Sea, we are definitely not going to drown in it. <laughs> Hooray! Topics Osmosis Why is grass killed if salt is sprinkled on it? <laughs> hey, huh? what are you doing? Don't eat the grass. <laughs> Fine. As always, ignore me. See, I warned you earlier. Hey, wait! You're making it worse. Don't do that. Look, you spoiled it totally. All right, don't cry. I will tell you why this happened. This happened because of a concept called osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion or movement of water molecules from a region of higher concentration of water through a semi-permeable membrane to a region of lower concentration of water. Do you think osmosis huh? took place when we sprinkled salt on the grass? Bingo! You are right! Huh? Normally, osmosis does not take place on a day-to-day -day hmm? basis because the grass tries to keep the concentration of water same inside and outside its cells through the process of transpiration. However, when we sprinkled salt on the grass, the concentration of salt outside the grass increased and the concentration of water decreased. As a result, the water present inside the plant started flowing outside due to osmosis. Since most of the water flowed out, the grass drooped down and eventually oh. it died. Hmm? Mm. Topic Eyes <laughs> Why do we have two eyes instead of one? Oh. You don't know? Okay, hmm? to understand this better, <laughs> close your right eye. Hmm? Hmm. Oh. Now, are you able to see the table kept on your right side? Oh. You were not able to see it, right? Hmm. Okay, let me tell you why. Both our eyes work together and help us to see, judge, and perceive a view accurately. Having two eyes provides us with a wider field of view. Hmm. <laughs> when both our eyes are open, we get a horizontal field of view of about 180 degrees. <laughs> However, with only one eye open, we get a horizontal field of view of only around 150 degrees. Huh? We are unable to view around 20 to 30 degrees. Hence, we are not able to see the table when our one eye was closed. Huh? Hey, did you know that our eyes see the same object from a slightly different angle? You don't believe me? Huh? <laughs> All right, look at this object. Both your eyes see the object like this. Huh? Now, when you see only with your left eye, the object will look like this. While, when you see only with your right eye, the object will look like this. Huh? Our eyes sent these two slightly different images to the brain. The brain blends or combines both the images to make a three-dimensional image of the object. Hey. But what is the huh? use of a three-dimensional image? A three-dimensional mm. image huh? helps us to understand how far or how oh. near an object is from us, facilitating better depth or distance oh. perception. This means having two huh? eyes enables us to judge the distance of the object or the depth at which the object is placed from us. <laughs> Topic, concave mirror. Why is your reflection upside down on a spoon? Hmm. Hmm? Wow. Looks like you're getting ready to go for a party. <laughs> Why don't huh? you stand here and then look into the spoon? <laughs> don't worry. Your image appeared upside down because of the inward curve of the spoon. The surface of the spoon, which is curved inwards, acts like a concave mirror. You look confused. Let me explain. 
A concave mirror is a mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards. Being curved inwards, it reflects or bounces back the light rays in a different manner. When you see yourself in a spoon, which is like a concave mirror, the light rays from your face fall on the top of the spoon and get reflected downwards. While the light rays from your feet fall on the bottom of the spoon and get reflected upwards. As a result, you see yourself upside down. Now, the point where all these light rays meet is called the focal point. When you stand beyond this point, only then will you be able to see an inverted image of yourself. However, if you stand before the focal point, the image will look upright.